Video game remakes are like my favorite thing going on nowadays. You know, taking these games from the 90s that were beloved and polishing them up with modern day technology. I gotta say, in 2019, remakes are doing better than they ever have. Well, typically. And personally speaking, based on just pure nostalgia, seeing Crash Bandicoot in the limelight once again, can I really ask for much more? I mean, I mean, I mean, I could, but that that would just be overkill. Crash Bandicoot The Insane Trilogy was a fantastic set of remakes of the original games that made the Orange Fuzzball a popular name in the first place. The team at Vicarious Visions did a fantastic job handling the classics that Naughty Dog made 20 years prior. Crash was considered PlayStation's mascot for a reason. But even though they were, soon after, no longer working on that franchise, they also made Crash Team Racing before moving on. And man, I, I absolutely love this game, man. It is easily one of the most most fun kart racers ever made. It does kind of fit into the Mario Kart clone moniker, but I would argue that it was even better than the game that it was directly going up against. If only this game got a remake as well to follow up the Insane Trilogy. Oh boy, look at that! Activision hooked me up with a review code for this game, and I gotta admit, that email where I received it was one of the best emails I ever got. And when talking about Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled, I'm gonna go into it with the same approach I did Spyro Reignited Trilogy about a year or so back. Let's be honest, we already know the original game is fantastic. The new one, that's a remake, is probably also gonna be fantastic. So instead of doing some sort of comprehensive review, let's just compare the two. Makes sense to me. Oh wow, holy crap, they remade the game's pre-title screen opening. That's, that's amazing! I was so disappointed that the Insane Trilogy didn't remake the original game's title screens. It's minor for sure, but I thought they added a lot to the game's charm. Oh man, I am, I am already in love here. Crash suffers from jaw pain. This is the best game in the franchise. So for those who never got around to experiencing the fantastic original game, Crash Team Racing's playstyle is one of those easy to play, hard to master deals. It's all about nailing your drifts and boosting like crazy. Very satisfying, but it takes a lot of time to utilize it ideally. Some of the shortcuts in these tracks are totally ridiculous to pull off, and the items are handled in a bit of a unique way. They're the standard fare if you've played any car racer before, you know what to expect, but by collecting and maintaining 10 Wumpa Fruit, not only do you gain some extra speed, but now items are more powerful as well. It actually is a lot to factor in, and the higher that you raise the difficulty, the more required it is to master all of these mechanics at the same time. And the game doesn't necessarily teach you a lot of these things in depth, it's really up to you by playing and bettering yourself with trial and error. Huh, what is this? The Dark Souls of Kart Racers? Please, stop. The controls were easily the best part of the original game, and I am happy to report that the team at Beanox nailed it here. It plays fantastically. And what better way to test your skills than with a fully-fledged adventure mode with an honest-to-goodness plot to tie it all together. Introducing the alien, Nitrous Oxide. He wants to take over the planet and turn it into a parking lot, but he'll only do it if he can outrace the fastest racer on Earth. And uh, yeah, that's that's it. Boom, compete with everybody, claim that title, and send Oxide packing back home to Gas Moxia. I always thought that having a story mode in a genre that never usually has one is really cool. Diddy Kong did the same thing, and it was neat there as well. Adventure mode was how I spent most of my time with this game back in the day, and I am so happy to see it perfectly recreated here. Expansive hub world and all. Aku Aku also no longer suffers from whatever medical condition he clearly had in the original, so... That's nice. It is ultimately still pretty repetitive to complete 100% because there are only 18 tracks spread throughout the entire world, and to go for full completion, you have to play each one multiple times with some different objectives. Luckily, the game is a ton of fun, so it's not a huge deal, that's how it was in the original as well, but here in Nitro Fueled, you get at least one new thing at the end of like every single race, so that's, that's pretty cool. And then we gotta talk about the visuals. Uh... Wow. You know, it's one thing to simply take a classic game and make it look better, but it's another to take so many creative liberties with it while also sticking to the context of the world that you're working in. For instance, Hot Air Skyway is a great classic level where you race against Pinstripe as a boss. However, it never really made a whole lot of sense to why you would race him in the sky. You just sort of did. Well, not anymore. Now it is an airborne casino with his face plastered all over it. It's perfect. This attention to detail is found everywhere in the game, including those pre-boss cutscenes getting a massive facelift. <laughs> I, 
I, I love him. Now, if Nitro Fueled was just a pure remake of Crash Team Racing, we'd be good. You know, it's a little bit on the short side, but overall, totally faithful to the original, and it is so much fun to play. However, the team at Beanox did something unthinkable. They went above and beyond. They acknowledged the post Naughty Dog games. With this new Crash Bandicoot revival heavily leaning on the PlayStation 1 games and not really anything else, I totally expected anything post Crash Bash to be completely lost to time. I don't think anybody played Crash Boom Bang and went, oh yeah, I really need more of that Viscount guy. But when discussing Crash's time behind the steering wheel, likely without a driver's license, how can we forget about these two other console Crash Racing games? I've already gone over how lame Tag Team Racing is, but Nitro Kart? That was a pretty fine game. It was really just more of the same though and not as good, it simply just felt like a sloppier version of CTR. It did have plenty of potential though, another fully fledged story mode, you got some decent theming and track design, it was just bogged down by not playing as well as the game it was mimicking. So fast forward to Nitro Fueled, what does that game do? Well it practically acts like a full remake of that game as well. Oh, oh Nitro Fueled, oh okay, yeah I get, I get it now. Carts, characters, every single track, all of the core content found in Nitro Kart is here, given the same amount of love and attention as the stuff pulled from Team Racing. And these are honestly some of my favorite tracks in the entire game as well. I never really played a whole lot of Nitro Kart growing up, so these were more or less brand new tracks for me to play on with CTR's awesome controls, which was so much fun. Also major props to the creative liberties taken with these stages as well. Inferno Island in CNK is very similar to Crash Cove in CTR, but plenty of changes were made in this remake to prevent it from feeling like the same stage all over again. The few instances of anti-gravity stuff that was in that game got cut for the sake of consistency, which is a bit of a shame, but it really doesn't detract from how good these tracks are. Bringing in the entirety of Adventure Mode from that game would have been cool though, as a means to incentivize players to master these tracks. They're all simply kept within the game's menus, so if you want to play them, you have to dig for them, and you get no real reward for doing so. They even come with their own token and time trial challenges. It just would have been cool if you were rewarded for playing them like you are with the tracks from CTR. It also would have simply served a good purpose for the players who are new to Crash, since they're probably going to see a fat mime and come up with a million questions. All of the battle mode maps from Nitro Kart were brought over as well. Oh yeah, that's right, there's a battle mode too! Now maybe it's just me and the household I grew up in, but I barely ever got to play the original PlayStation with other people. Nintendo got the priority there. So even though I played a ton of Crash Team Racing growing up, this is my first time experiencing that game's multiplayer, and yeah, it's, it's really fun. There are multiple modes to play in, from capture the flag to last man standing to collecting a bunch of crystals and holding onto them, and 12 maps to play on from both games. And with the whole Wumpa Fruit powering up items mechanic in this this mode as well, it's almost a bit more chaotic than the current leader of battle mode in Kart Racers, Mario Kart. I really hope that in the future Nitro Fueled maintains a healthy online community because me and my evil little penguin buddy here are ready to take down all of you fools. Oh and yeah, no worries, Penta Penguin makes his grand return as well, who like the original is only unlockable via a cheat code, and his main catchphrase is Penguin Yay One. Yay Penguin I won! This is because in the American version of the original game, there was some accidental dialogue pieces left over in that game's code, where one of the people on the development team said, Penguin Ye one That level of dedication, man, that's, that's awesome. Crunch Bandicoot makes his very first ever modern appearance. All of the bosses from Nitro Kart are playable as well, including that weird egg boy entrance. And who can forget about Zim and Zam? I know who they are and even I don't really know who they are. There's a ton of customization options with color changes, aesthetic car modifications. Characters also have costumes that radically change their look and they come with a unique victory animation on top of that. All of this takes Crash Team Racing from a really good kart racer to an awesome source of Crash Bandicoot fan service. Content from Crash Tag Team Racing is kept to a minimum here, you gotta remember that game was totally different and pr pretty pretty dumb. Only a couple of carts from that game make an appearance, but as for the future, well that's what the DLC is for. In my opinion, post launch DLC, especially if it's free, is totally okay in my book. Nitro Fueled is going to be getting a ton of brand new content, not rehashed content from other Crash games, Totally brand new stuff. 
One of the most exciting parts about this game, at least around launch, is the addition of Grand Prix. These are essentially going to be timed events that give the players access to new items, new tracks that are thematically inspired by the Crash universe and design-wise inspired by Crash Tag Team Racing, and even brand new playable characters. Tana is in fact going to be in the game as well as the old Trophy Girls, now known as the Nitro Squad. Baby Crash and Coco are supposed to be a thing as well. They don't they don't currently exist, so that's that's going to be weird. And Spyro 2? Oh hell yeah. Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled is fantastic. It's as good as we all figured it would be, but it has gone above and beyond to please the Crash Bandicoot fans who have been sifting through years of abuse and neglect. And I hope that finally, the world will soon see a brand new Crash Bandicoot adventure, not just a polished up old one. Man, you know, for the longest time, the original Crash Team Racing remained one of the best kart racers ever made, but I am confident in saying that this remake has usurped that game standing by a mile. Now, how this game stands up against the Crash Racing games on mobile, I don't know, but something tells me that Nitro Fueled is still the better choice there. It is also worth mentioning that the PlayStation 4 version has some exclusive content, a couple of retro skins, and a low poly version of an already existing track. It's hardly something worth choosing this game for one console over another, thankfully, but it's at least kinda cool if you consider Crash Bandicoot a PlayStation-based franchise all these years later. People are gonna be really quick to compare this to other modern-day car racers, but not me. I am simply happy that we have a good handful of racing games similar to how it was back in the 90s. Simply on the Switch alone, man. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, Team Sonic Racing, Crash Team Racing Nitro Kart, Hello Kitty Cruisers! Boy, what a lineup! I really hope this trend of 90s video games getting awesome remakes is here to stay for quite a while. There are plenty of games that still need that treatment. Honestly, I'm more excited to play games like that than brand new games. Maybe you can say I'm part of the problem with the gaming industry because, oh man, not enough of these games are brand new. But I don't care, man. Now I want Diddy Kong Racing. I want this more than anything.